Hello, everybody. We are about to embark on one of my absolute favorite things, which is collage. So we're going to be approaching this from the surrealist perspective. And I know a lot of you may not understand exactly what that means. So let me give you a quick overview. Surrealism was actually the name of an art movement that was really popular between World War I and World War II. And it was inspired, like all the images were inspired by the subconscious mind, which is basically your mind that's not totally alert, but it's also not unconscious. It's like when you're dreaming, um, that's a really good example of when you use your subconscious. So surrealist artists were really inspired by those subconscious images. Um, they were really inspired by psychology. Sigmund Freud is a really interesting psychologist and Carl Jung uh, that a lot of you might study in high school if you take psychology, but he really um, kind of reinvented psychology. Up until this point, if people had uh, mental illnesses, they were often given like lobotomies and really inappropriate treatments. However, Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung introduced talking therapy, which is what you often think of if you think of somebody going to a psychiatrist or psychologist and they, you know, sit and talk, they kind of introduced that. Um, and, and surrealist artists really loved that sort of psychology. They loved investigating why our minds operate the way that they do. So um, a lot of the images you see in surrealist art are um, sort of more deep than they appear. So the picture that I have in the background here is a famous painting called The Persistence of Memory. And it is a bunch of melting clocks. And on the pocket watch in the bottom left, there's a whole bunch of ants crawling on it. So all of these elements have some sort of deeper meaning that could be explained through Freudian psychology. Um, so the things in surrealism might look realistic, but they are things that can't possibly be real. So for instance, the landscape that is in this background, again, it looks very similar to the sort of landscape you could go see, but it's not a landscape that you would really ever encounter in real life. It's more like something you would see in a really bizarre movie. So that's why when you look at surrealist art, it's, it's just highly imaginative. You often hear people talk about our current surroundings being uh, really surreal. Like when we came back to school, people kept saying, um, oh, it's just so surreal to see everybody wearing masks. And it's because it's it doesn't really fit into our normal reality. So it seemed like beyond reality. So that's what surrealism is. And we can't talk about surrealism without mentioning this artist, Salvador Dali. He's the guy who painted the melting clocks on the previous slide. And to help get you to understand the perspective and the process of how a surrealist artist works, I want to explain the inspiration behind this painting. It's called the Hallucinogenic Toreador. And when I saw this painting in real life in St. Petersburg, Florida, it totally took my breath away. Um, it's 16 feet tall in real life, which is hard to tell from what you're looking at here. It is highly, highly detailed. And he made it towards the later end of his career. Um, he was about 65 years old when he painted this in 1970. But what I find really interesting is the inspiration behind this painting. And there's a couple different images within the painting. And I'm going to sort of walk you through how you can see the double imagery because it's really cool. It's like an optical illusion. So Salvador Dali in um, the late 1960s, was at an art conference. And he was at an art conference in New York City. Um, and much like you guys often find yourselves in class without a pencil, Salvador Dali also forgot to bring a pencil to take some notes that he wanted to write down. So he asked his buddy sitting next to him, he said, hey, can I borrow a pencil? And so his friend passed him a box of pencils and it was the Venus brand of pencils. And this you might recognize the statue that's printed on the box of the pencils. Um, <clears throat> she's a really famous statue that you can go see um, at the Louvre in Paris. And she's called the Venus de Milo. She's She doesn't have any arms right now because uh, they were lost. But anyways, 
and he got this box of Venus pencils. And as the friend passed him the box of pencils, Salvador Dali looked at them and sort of like blinked his eyes really hard and then goes, oh, there's me next painting. And I'm quoting that. That's what he said. And what he saw was not the Venus de Milo, not this highly recognizable sculpture in this highly recognizable brand of pencils, but he saw a matador, a bullfighter. And so he took this double image, which is sort of a Freudian thing. Like when you see something, but you meant to see something else, or if you say something and you meant to say something else, those are like Freudian slips, they call them. And so he built this 16 foot tall painting based on this one instance where he borrowed a pencil and, you know, kind of mistook the Venus de Milo for a bullfighter. So this huge painting looks like this. Here's the very top, and you can see the Venus de Milo sort of repeated in the background in this Colosseum. We have these really interesting graphic dots coming towards us that turn into flies. As you move your way down the painting, you can see that there's some drapery around the waist of the Venus de Milo. I am going to point out right now that all these little dots, you can see as I zoom in, it looks like a bowl. And that bull is drinking from <clears throat> a pond. And if you were to see this in real life, this little figure right here is quite detailed, but it's a woman that's lounging around on a little uh, flotation device, wearing like a 1960s style bathing suit. And this little boy here in the corner is supposed to be like a self portrait of Salvador Dali as a, as a youngster. <clears throat> So this whole painting looks like this from afar. And you may not have caught it right away, but there is a hidden picture in here of a matador. So you have to come across it almost in the same way that Salvador Dali saw it himself. Um, just as he was looking at the image of the Venus de Milo and then saw the bullfighter, you can do the same thing. If you sort of squint your eyes and really focus on the shadows, in this area especially, you will find the bullfighter's face, you will find um, his necktie, this red drapery that's around this particular Venus is like on his shoulder. And I will say it's not entirely clear, like the outlines of the figure are a little bit fuzzy, but he, you can kind of see like a little ghost of his little beret hat looking thing here. So his face is here, these are his eyes nose, mouth, face, here's his hat. This green part here is like the necktie. This is his shirt collar. So there is the matador. So there's the bullfighter and here is the bull right down here. All inspired by a time that Salvador Dali had to borrow a pencil. <clears throat> I think that's pretty cool. So to help get yourself into this similar mindset to create a really neat um, collage, surreal collage, I encourage you to flip through a magazine. Um, I came up with several different solutions to this, just going through one magazine. And look for combinations of objects, people, or things um, that you can put together that are surprising, that are imaginative, um, things that look realistic on their own, but when you put them together, they can't possibly be real in real life. Uh, it's really easy to take like the heads off of people and replace them with different heads of like animals like I did here. You could also um, look for furniture and put that furniture in unlikely places. If you are blessed to have a picture of a window in your um, magazine windows are really fun to work with because you can kind of layer them with something behind them, something unexpected that you wouldn't typically see in a window. But anyways, you're going to take two or more elements that you find in your magazine and create a surreal person, place, or thing. You're going to cut out those items, assemble them together, and then glue them carefully onto a plain white drawing paper. And I'm going to give you some tips um, in the next part of this video. All right, so the first thing you're going to do is obviously just flip through your magazine and look at what pictures your magazine has to offer. 
And when you find some images, school appropriate images, and cut those images directly out of your magazine. Or what I like to do is tear the entire page out because it's a lot easier to cut the specific shapes out once you have the entire page cut out. So what I did here, um, I was playing around with different things, putting them together, kind of folding the edges to see how it works first before I start all the detailed cutting. You want to use really good craftsmanship when you're cutting these shapes out. So as I'm cutting the, um, the details around this peacock, notice how I pretty much keep my scissors in the same place. So I'm right-handed, so they, they stay pretty much at that same diagonal. And the hand that's actually doing the most moving is my left hand quite frequently. See here how I'm like turning the page. That way I'm not angling my scissors in an awkward direction. You'll also notice that I'm not using the very tip of my scissors because this pair of scissors is a little bit older. Uh, it's a little worn. And the sweet spot where it really likes to cut is not right at the tip of the scissors. So you kind of have to figure out with your scissors where they cut the best. It may not be right at the tip of the scissors. Um, but you do just, just have to be careful that you're not pressing the blades down really hard um, as to cut off something that you don't want to cut off. If you do accidentally cut something off you didn't mean to, don't worry about it. You can always glue those parts back together when you make your entire um, collage. All right, so almost done here. Notice how I took out chunks of the paper at a time. I didn't go in one smooth line. I took a little piece out and then cut a big chunk of the paper off. Took a little bit more, cut the chunk of the paper off. So I'm speeding through this part, following the same steps that I did before, and I cut out his head. So um, I'm gonna fast forward and just kind of show you a whole bunch of different combinations I made. These are all pictures that I took out of one magazine. Um, I found several different combinations of, or pairs of people and animals and things I thought were cute and funny. Um, but this part, I'm going to show you how to properly glue it. So if you notice, I use a messy mat and that's just a scrap piece of paper, which Miss Braun and I both have in our classrooms. You want to make sure you have that down before you start gluing. So that way you can actually glue edge to edge. All right. So, um, in this particular assemblage, I'm trying to give the peacock arms. And uh, the magazine I was working with had a lot of advertisements for the new Peacock streaming service. So that's why I have so many Peacock pictures. And it also, luckily, was the one where they were doing a special on the Umbrella Academy, which I absolutely love. So I used uh, number five's arms here. And even though the arms are really small, I still just had to use the messy mat um, to put glue on that really small arm. Here I'm kind of a, playing with the arrangement first so I have an idea where I'm going to glue it. It's always a bummer when you um, are about to glue something or you do glue something and it's not exactly where you wanted it. So I wanted to make sure I had a good idea first. So here's my messy mat again and sorry that it's off the camera but there we go. I just ran the glue stick over it real fast on my messy mat and smushed it down. All right, I'm gonna fast forward through the next arm. All right, so what I'm going to do here is show you how you can actually cut into in like at the inner space of a shape. Um, so I cut out this huge pair of lips with that, which I kind of thought would look really neat, just coming out of like a like a sky full of clouds or something. And I wanted to put something inside, like behind the teeth. So I 
without cutting the entire thing apart, I just cut right at the corner of the mouth and then right along the edge of the bottom teeth. Then I started to mess around and arrange things that I could have sticking out behind that row of teeth. So here I am arranging uh, Klaus from the Umbrella Academy. And I also played around with um, a peacock that you will see as well. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this and explain how I kind of glued it together. All right, if you're doing an arrangement like this, you just kind of have to be careful about how you glue it together. So with this mouth picture, I glued the top part and left the bottom open. So that way I could then slide in the other parts, arrange them the way I wanted. I arranged those parts first and glued them in. And then the very last thing I did was just kind of put a little bit of glue on that bottom part and sealed it all together. So this is just an overview of all the other pictures I had put together, um, just combining things from one magazine. If you have action shots like that lady who was painting, those are great things to work with. Obviously replacing the heads, hands of people, those all work great. I hope you guys have fun doing this. And please remember, you're always welcome to do more than what is required for the assignment.